Let's take a look at this problem taken from the 2012 Brazil National Mathematical Olympiad. It says find all subjective functions f mapping the set of positive reals to itself such that 2x times f of f of x equals f of x times x plus f of f of x. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. A few things came to my mind when I first saw the problem statement. With the first thing being that f is subjective. So by definition, a subjective function says that whenever there is any positive real numbers, uh, say b, so like force in a range, then there exists some number in the domain, in this case also a positive real number, we call that a, such that f of a equals b. Now it so happens that I do not I do not have to really use this property, this definition of subjectivity, to solve this equation. But do feel free to try to make use of this and see how far you can go. And it's there's also another very natural question that came to my mind when I saw this word subjective is to ask myself, is F injective as well? Now actually the answer is yes, and I'm going to show that later. And the fact that F is injective is useful. The second thing is, The domain and the range are, def are defined within positive real numbers, not all real numbers. Now, in this case, I cannot simply put x equals zero. So to make most of the terms vanish and get some very quick results. And finally, the third, third thing, which is the most important property that I noticed, is that because the images of the function and also the domain are positive, they are not zero. So now I can do some algebraic manipulations, like moving, dividing things to the other side, to rewrite the equation into this form. Okay, moving an f of x to left hand side and moving x times f of f of x to the right hand side. Now this thing will become one over x plus one over f of f of x split into partial fractions. And then it can be rewritten as this. And this very very much look like um, looks like arithmetic progression. If we define the sequence as 1 over x, 1 over f of x, 1 over f of f of x, and so on. By keep mapping the previous terms into the function to generate an, the next term of the sequence. And this is an arithmetic progression. So um, having these things on the table, now we can move on to the full solution. So the first thing I'm going to show is that f is injective. So if a, b are positive reals and f of a equals f of b, then rewriting the equation of the, the, orig the original equation, I can say x times this expression equals f of x, f of f of x. Now notice that when we put a or we, whether a or b into this equation, these things will remain unchanged. So as long as this term, or I should say, 
this expression, the one underlined in red, is non zero, I can simply move this to the right hand side and quickly say that A and B are equal. Now, however, if that part is zero, say 2 times f of f of a minus f of a is zero, then given that the red part is zero, left hand side and right hand side will both be zero. So f of a times f of f of a is also zero. But this is absurd because the images of the under the function are all non zero, they are all positive. So the product cannot be zero. So we can quickly quickly say that it's a contradiction. So, and so therefore, a equals f of a, f of f of a over two times f of f of a minus f of a equals this. I can simply replace all the f of a's by f of b's. And this is in fact equal to b. And therefore, f is injective. And combining, f is also bijective. So having f being bijective allows me to define the sequence in a more general way. Is that from the equation, Let's get back to um, the form before we establish the AP first. From the equation, I can rewrite 2 over f of x equals this. And I can now define sequence where n it's not just a natural number, but also an integer by a naught equals 1 over x and a n is equal to 1 over f of x composite by n times. Now this is well defined because we know that f is bijective, so by definition an inverse exists. So I can even extend the sequence to um, negative indices. So for example, I can even say this because it's simply inverse of x. And if it's a uh, minus 10, then it's simply uh, this, uh, we composite this inverse by 10 times. And so the sequence is well defined. And the sequence is an AP. Now the reason that um, defining the sequence is important, showing that f is bijective is important, is because regardless of the common difference of the AP, whether it's positive or negative, we know that the sequence is bounded within the positive range. And no matter whether the AP is, sorry, the common difference is positive and the sequence will go up or is negative and it will go down. We actually have um but it's actually a bound sequence. And so it will always at some point go go beyond zero. As in if the common difference is positive and it keeps going up, so it seems to be fine, but the sequence is defined even, it's well defined even when the index is negative. So you can see that we still have this something going down. So if we look to the other direction, it's again, keep, it's again another sequence keep go, that's keep going down. And at some point it will become negative. Or if it's a decrease in sequence, then we can just say that as, as, as the term goes by, but at some point it will go under zero, become negative. So the only option for this sequence, for this arithmetic progression, 
to be well defined to exist is that the common difference is equal to zero, which means it's constant. So let's write this in, in our own words. If common, let, okay, we should say, let D be the common difference. So to make our writing more simple, let D be the common difference. If D is negative, then I do not need this because. Just say note that. It's very normal for us to um, keep um, uh, fine-tuning our wordings while we're writing our proofs. If D is negative, then as N increases, A N would be negative for sufficiently large N. Or I can just say if D is negative, A N would be negative for sufficiently large N. And if D is positive, I can say A N would be negative for sufficiently small N. Or you can make a remark with negative. Okay, therefore D must be zero, which means this sequence is constant. So the sequence constant means that 1 over x minus 1 over f of x is 0, which means f of x equals x for all positive view numbers x. So this is the only solution we can have. Now, we have to check before we conclude. Checking. 2x f of f of x is simply 2x squared and f of x times x plus f of f of x again should be x times x plus x is 2x squared and they are equal so yay we are done and of course circle this is our final solution i hope you enjoyed the video Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.